Daniel Tarn. He's currently living in uh, New Hope, Pennsylvania. Um, he's done quite a few books and uh, on uh, poetry, both translation and uh, uh, his own poetry. And uh, I'm sure some some of you saw him uh, uh, when he made his presentation yesterday. So uh, I'd like to introduce him. Uh, bring uh, Nathaniel Tarn up here right now. I don't like to read from old things um, that have already been published, so I'm going to read some recent things, uh, which, uh, as it happens, are Alaskan. Uh, that is because I was here for three and a half months, uh, two and a half months, I don't know how long, last summer. and. Um, this is work in progress. Some of these things are drafts. They're not finished, but I don't mind that. I, I find it's more alive somehow uh, than things which have gotten petrified in books. Uh, th this is called Goodbye to the Kenai. Nearing Kenai, city not peninsula, difficult to find the city off the main road, only two lines of churches to a dead guard, the heart we recognize at last a shopping center about to be in the mid-forest, side roads leading almost nowhere. In the end, very last drop in the bucket, old Russian chapel in a haze of golden grasses, boarded up, smelling of Novgorod, throttled by squalid apartment blocks around it. They could have put anywhere else good grief in the green world. Nearing Homer, Ninilchik, native community, help us protect our native way of life, orthodox church on the hill. The fishermen stand at intervals as if voiding into the sea. At the other end of town, from the native worked factory, their camp is in a neat line along the beach. They are trying to fish out the heart of the great waters before it reaches the factory, vein by bleeding vein. The salmon thrash like hearts falling to pieces. Oil in Kachemak Bay. Oh, I love the bay, but do you love your bay? Yes, I love the bay, and all the fish in it jumping clear all the way from here into Cook Inlet. But the big companies are not men anymore, you know. They are bigger than men, and you can't stop progress, and the radical leader in town has too many causes, writes too many letters about too many things, and is too radical about so much, add to which he's not been here besides what anyone would call around here very long. Freedom of the spit, living out three days into the ocean, bird crossed, seal visited, whale visitationed, are the bays, the bays and inlets across the water. Boat bouncing out, the bosun's bosom bouncing, local senator's kid, blonde, sassy. Among the paradisal trees of the small haven, state senator, noblesse oblige, whistling in the warblers. There is a, a wind, he says, I, I can't compete. There is no wind. The birds surprisingly will not obey his laws as well as men. Homer, last for oil, for health because the people fail to question the word progress. Plato, at the end of his tether, a philosopher white-bearded approaches the van, talks of selling out his homestead or giving it away to someone in the advancing hordes. Now the view has gone, he smiles. What's the use of the money? The great scenic view is clouding over the rain drowns it out most days in any case. Soon the sludge will come down like the wrath of heaven and drown it altogether. The killer whale who has leaped his way up Cook Inlet as far as Unalima leaps one last time out of eternity and stands sludge bound like a colossal semi-dipped cone at a Dairy Queen's. Enchanted with free goodies, the companies call for state park and parking lot and lottery this monument to vision. Adieu, the Kenai. You will be sold for oil, covered in hamburger joints and denominational churches, 
a spot of leprosy from which no lupin spear, no hemlock parachute, and no black lily of Unalima can rise or fall, sold to men, mud, mosquitoes to buy a little respite for all the rest until the rest also dies of the plague. Alaska, USA, north to the future. The future of what? I drove to Alaska, it took me 23 days up the highway from the East Coast. I did stop a little along the way. And uh, this is the narrative of the entrance to the Great North. It takes place mostly around Lake Cluini on the Yukon side. Oh, here is the great American promised land with mountains of light bursting apart in the clear air, light on light, and pow, the gates at whatever sense an acre from the Russians, the clear air shot with mountain bluebirds, the bluest bluebirds ever, the purest air, a mystery of mountains where Canada ends, gate after gate as the sun slants. Land of no night, gone beyond where night is known, past the hot Liard, rush of Yukon, 2,000 miles into the Bering Sea, all your peoples north crying, we want moose, we want bear, want wolverine, trickster, hard over St. Elias on the other side of the crest, Yakutat, friendly Tlingit, want green over this, want snows in summer, queen of the Yukon, sister to the spirit, disappeared forever among eagles, snowdrift among snowbirds, Mist over the lake, a thousand miles of dust settled into Lake Kluene, sinks to the bottom, no sediment, weariness dropping off like horns, antlers, presenting oneself cleansed by the long journey at the great land's gates. Three doll sheep, pure ivory, high on sheep mountain, as if by royal command. We climb into woolen pants against the zero, into the van now baptized the Yukon Ritz, drinking Moskovskaya 100 degrees on Alaska's doorsteps. Dashboard table against the cold, summer foods, bread, mayonnaise, tomato, cucumber, scallions, cheeses, banana, broccoli, central heating vodka against the cold. Outside, thrashed by the wind, catkins not seen so thick since Arctic Russia, their woolen outerwear, blue lupins, who would have known as well that Alaska would be full of swallows? Pow, that asshole Robert Service, bard of the Yukon, is discontinued. Hasn't anyone been around lately to open Cluany? What passes for a poet up here is Robert Service. They probably needed you, William Wordsworth, with a dash of Whitman in you, and the bones of some unknown poet, Siberian shaman perhaps, St. Lawrence Yupik. Notes made against the cold for an ode to WW in the great land. Morning and sun after the storm. Ice pushed against shore by waves, ice crystal waves. The blue is astonishing, like a knife cut. Two pair of red-breasted magansas close into shore, then rapid flight against the ice. Spirit of the north, the path zips open. Pow! Trip totems found. I guess my two favorite places were the great coast up there, that way, uh, Bering and Chukchi, and this cathedral of trees and poles up there. But unfortunately, I don't have any poems about those. Oh, this is a poem about the coast, though. It's called, What I Have Known as the Northwest is the Southeast. From the top of the tree, where I had climbed in hope of, in hope of what, I ask, the skull at the top of the spine, ravens at both windows pecking me out. We fell out of Alaska in a rush of rain, flushed out by cataracts, unending rushes of water, greening the pines and ferns into the sun-drenched fruit bowls. After three weeks of rain, no longer sure of the outlines of leaping fish or mountains, smoking at dawn as mist burns off, common or garden sunlight is like a god gift, 
raven? On the last day up there, at the top of the tree, drank wine on a big Englishman, bought the flag of Alaska, found some antique ivory, and after beer and love, for the first time in our joint lives, we danced, we danced in Ketchikan. I'm supposed not to write simple poems, which is why I really tried hard tonight to find some simple poems. Uh, I, it's a difficult reputation for writing complicated poems. They always seem simple to me, but, but not to other people. Mm. Anyway, this one, <clears throat> this one is called The Narrative of the Great Animal. And I, I think you'll know what, well, I tell you straight away. Denali was our greatest animal. We might never have seen it, doubted all the ports, never realized why it was unmistakably Lord of America. It rose when it rose two whole days out of surrounding mountains like the sun's ghost after a burial at sea, like the white whale out of the sea defining all else immediately. Almost a painting. That unreal as when they say postcards, etc., or travel poster. Archetype of all the mountains behind the mind lurking. No, they say of a beast lurking, animal negative, and we talk of gods. Always there against the epiphany. White ship of space, rootless, suspended from the clouds, sometimes the whole sky gray, the crown floating by itself in the skies, or clouds on its face recessing it into immeasurable farness, or lifting it, the mountain, depressing it according to the play of cloud, the lila. A resurrection, de mortuis, from the death of our senses in its shroud, which is also a wedding gown, bride, bridegroom in one plenitude, knowing or not the plenitude, there is no other question. That we could have been again encamped with most of humanity at the foot and spent days, days, weeks even, and not seen it, as so many coming all this way, these thousand miles for a short time on little money, their poor lives spent at the gates now, and still not seen it, this beats all matters of election. When thus the mountain rose and the traveler disbelieving who had said all along the way, is this Denali? And then this and this and this, there being no end to the mountains, but patient, there being always a step below perfection until at road curve, oh my God, hushed. And the other not seeing yet, and then the other also, oh my God, and in a still greater hush because now there was no possible mistaking. Great star of space, de mortuis, complete in its motionless travels, even then at its destination, never yet gone from earth its mother, we might not have seen it, never have looked on God's face and lived so far to tell tales. Had we not seen it, the world would have always forever thereafter, and its word, logos, seemed smaller, because after the moon, after all, it is never the same again, an earthly thing has to be great indeed, perfect indeed, to give that plenitude, that lack of argument, tells us we have looked on God's face and lived so far to tell tales. And had we not seen this, would not have seen either in any sense of the word seen, since only this mountain gave the world eyes and senses to apprehend it with catalog, world model, oh, the cinnamon mountains, all, all the other mountains in all their varied glory, the heaving bears with the earth like Atlas on their shoulders, the wolves running as fast as cars, the idiot ptarmigan posing at roadside, the payroll animals bowing at each bus, the tourists screaming. Continue at own leisure. My minute preoccupations under Denali 
Horned lark, American first, eagle, repeat, eagle, repeat, but immature, wheat ear, American first, ptarmigan, American first, continue as per notebook, list climbing, X percent of total record, but the invisibles, harlequin duck, later St. Paul, arctic warbler, later Point Hope, golden plover, later Shishmarev, all these waiting for the next time, the world being in place, no problem, and then seen again and again from turn again arm from the plain back from the Pribilofs, from the roadside back from Fairbanks as if it were a friend now and reluctant to leave. And the great animal, even greater than this animal, Denali god beast, god animal with hips of stone and rock haunches waiting for the next time also to get us before another sighting, another chance at the vicinity but we have seen it and then by implication also the other as black as it is white cloud of mosquitoes, splat, blood on hands and face and clothes, wolf blood, moose blood, bear blood, bird blood, perhaps John Doe from Texas or Oklahoma blood, the quote animals, unquote. What a merger in the sight of the whole. Outside the park, every signpost in Alaska is riddled with bullet holes back into civilization. I'll read a couple more short poems and that's it. This was written on the way home with that tremendous sense of the whole of America behind us, north and south and west and east, the giant continent. The world has fallen down. We are the only ones who remember how it was made, put together. Entering night again, we must hold on to each other. No other memory is left, alone. We are the plan, time's grid, and no one else survives. Like the sea's whisper is the great land's name in our ears, Alaska. Like the shape of waves, its mountain shapes, Alaska distantly haunted. We remember its beauty, the noise of the glaciers, folding their arms. I got a couple here that are so new that they're not even uh, typed out yet, but they, they are beginning to talk. I was reading the philosopher Immanuel Kant, you won't believe this, but I was writing these poems alongside the philosopher Immanuel Kant, this most difficult goddamned philosopher to read in the world. Um, and the Arctic, the, the Arctic which at last was coming back into this. So two, two more short ones who just bear me. I, I am so happy to be, in fact these have never been read, you see, none of these. Uh, and it's, it's so fine to be able to read them here in Alaska. Tried lifeless matter, lifeless God, or living matter, living God, but at the heart, still and unexplained, the snow like down for no known purpose, and the ice blew on its faces like angel faces, and then all this, mosquitoes drave men mad, oppressive to natives, great sea monsters filled with oil for the sake of food, but we shall eat tonight, not eat, there shall be famine, or rich weeks, the waiting, the stillness of the man on the ice, movement at sea, the correspondence of desire and patience, like a mermaid, exquisite song, bunting by day, howl of the owl by night over the city of ice, visibility down, you cannot tell the houses from the fields, earth from the sky, and when you go into her uninhabited wastes, no guarantee is given, the direction shows by ripple or by drift, there's a way back. This is the last one. As for the point of balance, judgment will produce the artifact in splendor. This is point hope, 
which, like the victory above this desk, towers in ivory, though but three inches high, serve to propel the killing shaft towards the bird, bunting or owl, sufficient to the appetite of natives. We found three carcasses, therefore to purpose purposive. And I will kill the lyric as it soars by memory. All the lyrics before it, this is elegy. And as the lyric dies, same way the owl snow on the sea by day, or land by night, wearing their fatal decorations, white fears for newborn song while process dies. The shaft falls off, the point lives on alone, a throb inside the prey, and then is dead to it and food to us. But in that moment frozen, the victory, 400, 700 AD, precisely winged object sold to me as part of sled for sense, mounted, looks like her, headless, where the head, lodged in the prey, eats at its life with teeth soundless as memory, triumphant as desire. This is point hope, and all is possible. Thank you. Like uh, one uh, speaker, or one singer, and then a chorus, repeating after this that's more that's that's what if you could get that in your minds that would help on this song <clears throat> oh you yeah, have to apologize for my drum friend here he's a little cold he's a little, little high pitched Stomp dance song. Now this is a religious song. This is a peyote song, and this is a Kaw Indian song that was written by my grandfather. Actually, there are three songs that I'll incorporate into one. <coughs> I wish this drum was a little lower pitched. It doesn't sound quite right. Yana, 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 yana,
This is a record that I made about three or four years ago. It's called Pepper's Pow Wow. <coughs> and uh, like I'm sort of like Larry. Larry uses tradition and then goes out from it. And I do the same thing with my music. And uh, I took one of the songs that I just got through singing <coughs> and uh, put European chords to it. And uh, I'm primarily uh, a musician. That's how I make my living. <laughs> and. Uh, and I'm, I really uh, like jazz music. That's one of the uh, cultures that came out of like America, like from everybody. That, uh, and I use that influence a lot in this music. And this song is called Witchy Type. <laughs> Yeah. 
So that's what I do with uh, traditional music. I uh, put a beat to it and uh, get it so like uh, people can enjoy it, they can dance to it. Uh, I enjoy it, that's the main thing. Uh, uh, I was scheduled to play here with like several other people, but uh, it didn't happen. So what I'm going to do is play a saxophone solo for you. And uh, it has no name. Uh, it's never been played before. And uh, I hope you can get with it. <clears throat> By the way, I call my saxophone Edebelehe, which is named after my great-grandfather. And I come from the uh, Eagle Clan of the Caw Tribe. And so this means flying eagle. <clears throat> back to your uh, homes and your places. I have a couple announcements. Um, this morning we'll have the, we, as uh, you know, uh, we uh, changed the Native Dance and Performing Arts session that was originally scheduled uh, on Wednesday afternoon. We changed that to this morning. So that'll be uh, the first thing, <clears throat> the first uh, presentation after, after we get started this morning. And uh, the, there's, uh, we have a, a revised uh, agenda for today. It's, it's out on the front desk out there. And if you make uh, the following change at the, on the 1 p.m. Uh, discussion and dialogue, group one section, uh, Nathaniel Tarn uh, wishes to change the title of his uh, discussion session to uh, comparative aesthetics. A.P. Johnson had just informed me that uh, uh, the dance dance uh, performance tonight will start at uh, 7 o'clock Indian time. And uh, is there any other announcements right now? George, go ahead. No, I don't know if you understand my language, but I'll try best I could. If I begin to talk in Tlingit language, I'll put more, more words into it. Go on a little deeper, which is that you can't pick it up, but I'm going to talk about it in Tlingit language. But in this, what people did, I learned it from SJS 1912, I quit 1914. I quit too, I quit too early. This, a grandfather of mine, he went right on, but me, I dropped off behind him. That's how I can speak too good of it, to use English language. In our own grandfather, they used to say, 
broken fire pot language. What the world it hurts? Is it? Yeah, that it that can't be honest. Yeah, that is that it is the dance you you white people haven't seen yet in the sun. You haven't hear it yet. We're gonna use it tonight. You have we have watched the younger generation as they dance, oh they good. They dance according to the song. But this and there you haven't seen it yet. And it's gonna be a history about it where that song came from and never been used. Some years ago, in a century. So we're going to dig into it. As the, uh, I don't know how long ago, I, was, uh, I think I was standing um, there, and uh, Sai Peck asked me a question. So we're going to dig down deeper. This is what's going to happen to me when the time comes. I know it. Yes. Is my father's nephew right here. He knows it. And this is what you're going to use. Because now, all this time we have invited us in here, we sit on this table, just like a cat, listen, don't know what to say. Oh, that's all we did. So we got disgusted and went to that room and go right ahead what we're supposed to come to this town for. Instead of we doing it, you are all talking to us just like a small children. Now, we can see and we listen awful careful because our grandfather had preached all these things into the head and let it tack solid in there. And we're gonna die with it pretty soon. And where are you gonna go? Mr. Davis, can you tell me? Are you gonna go on top of my grave, Mr. Davis? Can you tell me the history? Oh, no, too late. It's gonna happen the same thing to this. This is about the last of it. One more in cake. Our brother Henry Davis told me I would take my hat off to this man any time when I see him, but he can hardly walk no more, and he can't see very good no more. Now, you're really missing a lot of things from us, but you had some workers out there in each village, everywhere. Younger generation, those are the ones can ride, those are the ones can listen to us. Those are the ones can bother us with a tape recorder. But can't get the full swing of it. We're gonna die with it. That's too bad. Where are you gonna dig after we die? Can you tell me? You don't have no place to dig. There's a lot of books written there and there and there. You can't get the whole thing. Oh, no. it's too bad. If we, they did the same thing to us last year in this year, they give us 15 minutes, okay, you go to there. We try, no, 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 no. Let's complete this one here. Yeah. So we, I held it down. Now this time, it's just exactly the same thing. It's, it started. It's been how many days? We have come, came, accomplished nothing. What we supposed came here for it, nothing. All took by you people. Now, I don't know. I never get lost. I do up in the woods, but the garden this like this here, I always two ears, you know, these sharp ears. And my eyes are getting weak, but still I can see. I always watch, I always watch. When you learn bear how he act, brown bear, they're gonna teach you by your uncle. 
By the time he got through with your teaching, you can never, you're going to come to that bare 10 feet away from you. Then you, the way you can aim right in the ear. Get shot. So we learned it. Exactly the same thing when the people, if you knew this action of the bear, you're going to know what the man starting, where he's leading, where he wants you to be. You're going to catch on to it right away. So we learned it. I'm pretty sure he learned it. Now, I took a little bit time, but I saw this Disgusted, don't know what to say. And they won't expect us to tell our history and culture, to let it go. Sacrifice, huh? No. <laughs> Can't do it. Can't do it. It's too heavy because the whole southeast of Alaska not in here. We can sacrifice our, our history and our culture. No, can't be done. It's got to be from everywhere in this southeast of Alaska before we do it. So, if you don't care about what you're going to dance about it tonight, okay, fine. But the dance and the song, you haven't heard it yet. And a lot of songs are like that. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to call on, uh, since we're running so far behind schedule, uh, I'd like to call on Harry Bremner to make some uh, uh, opening remarks this morning. Uh, Harry? Ladies and gentlemen, we gather here today, and sometimes the word it helps the young. In my hometown, high school girls and high school boys, white and native, they call me a grandpa. Even the business people, they call me a grandpa. On the business, for the land fight, each tribe, five tribes in Yakadot, each lot of different tribes in Mamda, us a Klingit. On the Eagle tribe, has so many. And on the Raven, it's so many. And five tribes in Yakadot. For the land fight, they appoint the leader, it's the chief for the land fight, five. After those five elect, those five had a meeting to elect the president. And they elect me as the president. That's why I get my letters, it's the business letters, it's the chief of the chief. And I just want to reduce myself. When I was a young I'm not born old. I used to be a young man. No school for us in Klingit and uh, Indian. All over in Lasky. We had the school here in Sitka, Sheldon Jackson, but it's a small. And we had one in uh, Salem, Oregon. They call him Chamawa. And one in Severi, far away. And one in Cushman. That's all I remember for Indians. So I went down to Chamawa. I was a poor boy. The people is not rich like today. Very once a while I see one dollar from whom. On vacation in summer, 
I don't go home. I stay there. What I make money on it, picking berries, apples, strawberries, all kind of cherries. When I pick in strawberries, one cents a basket, 60 in 10 hours, my best 60 cents. So the way we are a long time ago, and it's not like today. That's why when I speak in like now, I'm going to be in Anchorage 14 and 15 of this month again. What we have a little left in Alaska, I wish they leave us alone. We ain't got no more trees, no more fish, no more gold, no more fear. It's not myself. For my great-grandchildren, not all of myself as the Indian, White is coming in from down the states. They're going to have a children. 70, 1970, Yakada, 250. Today it's 500. Another five years from now, a little Alaska is going to be overcrowded. So they take too much away from us. This is why I speak when I speak into, to the conquerors when they come into Yakutat. So I just wanted to tell you a little story. I'm thinking of myself, you young ones in here. I'm your grandpa. I never had a trouble in my life, my children. I never been in jail. I've never been caught, and I don't smoke, I don't drink. All this from the coach, I take his advice. He said, if you smoke, you inhale with it. It goes into your lungs, and it's slow killing. When you get getting old, they're going to turn into cancers. And strong drink not only kill you, they put you in a jail, you're going to, they put you in a trouble. So I think his advice, I think that's why I'm still living today. When I speak in a Hence, convention, I don't mention my age. Because when I look around, too many young girls around there. <laughs> 83 years and November 5th, my age. And what is on the book, you all read it. You know what is on the book, on the history, from your childhood, from your grade school. But someone, our stories, it's not someone, it's not on the book. What the short story I, wanted, I wish to tell you, how we find the copper. People in Yakada did come from a Cabo River. A young man, a real young, he's got into a trouble. And Indian had a law. It's of a strong law. No lawyer to change it. Whatever the leader said it goes. But in all those days, even a man killed the other man, sometimes Lord make him free. But the olden days, nothing can change it. 
So these young men, he made a mistake. I don't know they do that. How he made a mistake? He's a real young. And those days, if a person made a mistake, they sent him away from the village, never come back. If he come back, that's the time he's going to punish. The first punish to send him away. So they sent this young man away by the tribe. When they walk in, in front of those line of people, he said, Chief told him, you're not going to come back. If you do come back, that's the time they're going to punish you. They're going to kill you. You're going to go opposite of this village, we're not going to come back. He had a young mother, first child of that young lady. Two days, a day after he go, the mother left. She tried to catch up with her son. Two days after it, he catch up and call him, son. The boy look, his mother, he took his arrow. You go back, lady. He didn't call him a mother. You go back, lady. You make me a coward. Don't bother me. Young lady said, shoot your arrow, son. I'm not going to go back. I'm going to go with you. So the young man said, all right, woman. So they keep on walking, keep on walking so many days until they go beyond this range, this mountain. There's no more mountain. After they get beyond the mountain, stop to this range, they thought, one far away, just one little mountain standing. And they said, Mother, you stay here. I'm going to go to that mountain. And he left. Just about halfway, it get dark. He made a fire. In and all is make a fire, a small little fire before at night. And he sleep. Next early morning started again. He make it. He go up on the top of that mountain. Six sheep. He kill all the sheep. And he lay down. He sees something far up at the eagle, but far up. And he don't say it, just in his thought. He said, whatever you are up there, I'll kill this for you. He cut them open, and he left. Just about halfway away here, where he make camp out of the, that's the way he make a fire again. It's getting dark. He sleep. And that night he dreamed a young, good-looking man come to his fire. His hand is like this. This, my people, send it to you. Thanks. What you kill for us, all my people eat. So this present is send it to you, my people. And he said, this what I got in my hand, you're going to see it in your fire. Then he turned around. When he turned around, he said, Eagle, golden eagle, 
fly away. He had no chance to question again. The eagle flew away already. So, before he left, that she said, don't forget it, what you see in your fire. And next day he forgot all about it. Before he came to his mother, he saw a moose tracks 